how did that happen? The evolution of where Christianity went, hey, the Judeo-Christian, the great nation, America, yes. look at the values and principles that we have. Where did the fall happen? I encourage anybody to find me a Netflix, Amazon, or Hulu documentary or film in the last 10 years that portrays someone that is a Christian in a positive way. Bruce Lawn. This is Patrick but David Valuetainment. They had Charlie Kirk on. I've never met Charlie Kirk. I'm friendly with some of the folks from uh, his organization. And uh, I, I would like to have a conversation with them as well. But let's check this out. Sports teams will say, hey, you have to be a little bit more understanding about the Muslim religion, but Christianity, they Correct. can get. So how did that happen? The evolution of where Christianity went, hey, the Judeo-Christian, the great nation, America, yes. look at the values and principles that we have. Where did the fall happen? Boy, that, that's a powerful question. It's hard to pinpoint a certain year, but there are certain. So the question is, when did this happen with regards to Christianity uh, no longer being a religion that people got to respect? Now, I have a very specific point that I'll, I'll save about when this happened and why it happened. But let's listen to uh, what, what Charlie Kirk here says. Only an era in the 60s or 70s, these revolutionaries took control of a lot of institutions and the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times, got perverted and changed. I encourage anybody to find me a Netflix, Amazon, or Hulu documentary or film in the last 10 years that portrays someone that is a Christian in a positive light. Well, uh, we got Jesus Revolution now. That just hit streaming platforms. I think that portrays people in a positive light. <laughs> and in fact, this was pinpointed recently. I can't remember who. An actor came out um, and he said, hey guys, why is it the pastor always has to be like the abuser or the embezzler or the, and you think- There was a gentleman from the office that came out and said that, right? About the archetype, right? The archetype is if you see a Bible in an Amazon film, you almost can assure that that person is gonna be a villain or at the very least a hypocrite. Rarely is that the person that is going to be acting ethically, acting morally, and that's a complete change. And it's done rather subversively, right? Now, I, there's a, a couple of things I probably disagree with Charlie on, but I mean, he's kind of, to kind of dropping some facts right now in our in our culture and so but here's the thing kind of the post post 60s worldview the moral view that came in in the post 60s and it didn't really set in until now it took 60 years is hyper individualism and i'm all for entrepreneurship and for people to succeed but you must balance that you must counterbalance it with duty and obligations if it's all about just the pursuit of your own pleasures and your own delights you will be not just empty i think you're going to be miserable and so we build an entire society, I think, on this very dangerous moral pretext. And we wonder why we have the most depressed, suicidal, anxious generation in history. Mm. I, I totally sympathize with every accusation of American Christianity that you could imagine. They could be hypocritical. Their churches are too big. They don't give enough to the poor. I think some of that is a little silly. But it is a fact. Some of that is silly and some of that is just not true. Christians give like way more uh, than non-Christians to charities and uh, adopting babies and all kinds of stuff. Fact that as we have turned our back on American Christianity with the roots of it, that we are less free, we are more confused, and we are filling it with these other fake religions that we could talk about. The religion of anti-racism, mm. the religion of scientism, right? Even earth worship at times, which is hyper, you know, <laughs> global warming. Yeah, environmentalism. Yeah. And so there's a great <laughs> book by Tom Holland. He calls it Dominion. It's not a great title, but he, it, Holland with an E. But yeah, it's how, the, how Christians remade, uh, revolutionized the world. I encourage everyone to read it. And he's actually a secular agnostic who argues that what we consider to be common sense, what we consider to be normal, is a traditional inheritance from the Christian history. And you might not like Christianity, you might not believe Jesus is the king of the world, I do, but you should at least accept that if you remove Christianity as the bedrock of your civilization, be careful what you fill it with, because currently we're filling it with garbage. Yeah, so, so a couple things based on what you just said. One, I, I, I saw Andrew Schultz the other day. You know Andrew Schultz, the comedian. I don't know if you're familiar with Andrew familiar, Schultz. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, to me, I think he's one of the most talented comedians. I can watch his clips on replay, and the guy makes me laugh over and over again. There's really, only a couple really guys that make good. me do that. I've yeah. probably seen his clips. I just he, he, you, you, you. Shout out to Andrew Schultz, man. I really appreciate, one, some of his takes, even though they're vulgar. Don't come for me in the comments. But And I appreciate him being open about wanting to go to church and uh, you know, going to church, enjoying church, faith. I think those are good things. You know who he is? Yeah. He's he's incredible. Cool. He said the other day he went to church. Yeah, yeah, he's great. And he says he went to church the other day. He says mm -hmm. in the first three minutes of being in church, he started crying. This isn't that's not his brand at all. Mm -hmm. Andrew Schultz's brand is not to this say wasn't a that. Joke. No, this was no. not a joke. He was being serious about it, right? Now, if you go to the Justin Bieber story, and we can go to Hillsdale, you know, not Hillsdale, Hillsong. but the Hillsong and all yeah, that I, stuff. I saw Australia. that firsthand. Yeah. I saw a lot of it. Yeah, so a, a lot of that, the, the challenge then becomes also to say, sometimes, the, the, you know, it's overly judgmental on who's going to be the Christian to help bring the brand and, you know, bring others towards it. There's a challenge with that as well. But, you know, for me, I saw Wall Street Journal's article recently came out with values. I'm sure you the saw that as well. Yeah. Values, the collapse of the American values. Patriotism, community That's right. involvement, having children and going to church have just descended in meaning. But money is up. Money is up. Yeah. And that's that hyper 
for individualism. That's what you were talking and about. I, yeah. Again, I am a capitalist. I think that markets work, but they must be in harmony with other duties that make the money meaning meaningful. Otherwise, yeah. it's just nothing more than pleasure or things that will erode in dust. So it must point towards something. You must aim high. That was the Western ideal, right? Hey, you want to see something crazy? 67% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. Do me a quick favor. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date on all the videos here on the Bless God Studios channel. A lot of people who are uh, um, Christians will go and they'll go in a community that's safe and they'll talk to one another where it's a safe place. Whereas Muslims will go out there and they'll baptize and they'll convert. Where, you know, if you, if you look at the two and you'll say, well, one is quiet about it, the other one's being bold about it. One is advertising why he is, the other one is not. But at the same time, the media will defend Muslim, well, but that, the media that, will not the defend Christianity. The, the, the media, so he says the media will defend Islam and not Christianity. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys why I think that is here in a second. Sports teams will say, hey, you have to be a little bit more understanding about the Muslim religion, but Christianity, they Correct. can get shots. So how did that happen? The media. He said the media will. Okay, so here's, here's, here's what I know to be true. I remember the shift happened, and whether good or bad, I remember the shift happened around the time of 9-11. I remember there was kids at my school who weren't even practicing, but they definitely were being treated different because of 9-11. And after that, people were extremely more sensitive and delicate with Islam because there was an uptick in what you would call, I guess, Islamophobia, right? At the time. I remember specifically seeing stuff in New York. And I think in that process, what had happened was Islam got categorized as a protected class. And there are certain groups that get protected class status where you, you cannot be as critical towards them. LGTV, Transformers, right? And this is, this is in the YouTube community guidelines. This is why someone like David Wood had to create multiple channels. David, David Wood going hard is, is sometimes um, necessary, right? And so in that, he had to create multiple channels to spread out the attention that he was getting and give his main channel away to a, a, a Christian apologist who used to be Muslim, young lady uh, from Europe. She's, she's awesome. And so I think the, the, the crux of this, in terms of everything Charlie said, I think this happened after 9-11 that this community became a protected class. And because it, it became a protected class, you couldn't be as critical, whereas with Christianity— it's still viewed, even though it isn't, in my opinion, it is still viewed, and remember, perception is reality, as the dominant faith. And I think that's changing. I think the dominant faith right now is fringe leftism in the West, where we're defying what is objective, objectively true, where we're defying what is biological, right? All that stuff, we're, we're defying all these things, and I think that is actually the the, the 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 dominant view. I think Christianity has become like actual biblical worldview. Christianity is becoming less and less. And and Jaden, yeah, you're right. The, the the overlap between leftism and new ageism is there for sure. It's a lot of the I'm spiritual but not religious. I want the idea of being spiritual and having a spirituality, but I don't want any of the accountability. It's my truth versus the truth. I uh, am am a part of the. I, I have a moral ground and I, I, I morally grandstand against ideas I don't agree with, but those are not allowed to be challenged, right? So if you listen to like progressive Christians or you listen to folks from the leftist side, they will have objective morals, like objective morals. Like listen to Brandon Robertson's conversation with Jeff Durbin and James White. He will make absolutely moral statements, just they're the inverse of what the Bible says, right? So... It's it's just it's just ironic that Christianity is viewed as a dominant view, even though it isn't, and therefore it doesn't have any of the protections, right? Um, that Islam has, or that uh, different trans, you know, different communities have, in regards to that. And so I think that is specifically why, with with that religion, why they they have they have this protective status, is because of the the real life issues they were dealing with, right? And and by the way, I don't care what you believe. I don't care if you're part of the Transformers community. I don't care if you're what religion you are. I don't think anybody should be bullied or beaten or attacked for their views at all. Like, I, and I think most Christians agree. Don't, don't, don't attack people for their views. Don't attack people for 
their positions, don't attack people for their identity, regardless on what that is. That's a very sensible position. I think when groups who are marginalized get attacked, they will tend to overcorrect. And when they gain a little bit of power, they will weaponize it against the folks that attacked them once upon a time. I think that's what happens. And I think it's unfortunate. The hard part is if you don't have Jesus, I'm not saying it's right, I'm saying I understand. The hard part is when you don't have Jesus and then you get a little power, what do you want to do? You want to poke poke your chest out. So there was people that were brutalized in the name of Jesus by people who I don't think were Christians. And then the people who were brutalized now got a little bit of power, got a little influence, got a little clout. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to stick their chest out. They're going to, right? Not saying it's right, but I'm saying I understand how these things happen. So what is the point? I think the point is for us as Christians, we got to be living out this gospel. We got to be living out this love your enemies aspect. We got to be, right? We have to live this out in a way where people may disagree with the Messiah we worship, but our daily lives are at least consistent and congruent with the things we profess. If we profess that we're born again, if we profess that we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. If we profess that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. If we profess that we are to care for the least of these. If we are profess, at least if our li- or if our lives line up, then you can not be dismissed as a hypocrite and say, "Well, you know what? I don't agree about their God, and I don't agree their views on Christian sex ethic and all these things, but I respect that they're at least consistent. I respect because what is the worst thing you can be in the eyes of a non-believer? A hypocrite." When they could point to an area of life and say, yeah, you claim this, but you live this way. That's a bad luck, man, right? So I think we need to make sure that we're being consistent and cohesive and on in line with the things we proclaim to be, or what, what, are we, what are we doing, right? What are we doing? Hey, this clip is from our daily after-party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month, where you get access to the replays of our daily after-party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store, only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us contextualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. The perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.